Hello, my name is Glenn Hall. Today is Saturday, October 26th, 2024, and this video is called First the Spiritual, Then the Natural. Many of you may be shocked by the title of this video because you will certainly remember that I have often quoted 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 46, which says, But it is not the spiritual that is first, but the natural, and then the spiritual. First the natural, and then the spiritual. The reality is that God wrote the Bible in a mysterious, coded way. He wrote it by parables. Jesus said that he never said anything except by a parable. Since Jesus is the Word of God, and since Jesus is the one who inspired men to write the Bible, every single story in the Bible, although historically true and accurate, is also a parable. It contains untold numbers of hidden meanings. As Andrew Juke says, the Bible is parabolic. It's not that there's just one prophetic interpretation of a scripture, but there are many. And so never limit what the Bible can say to you. Do not put a natural your natural understanding upon the Bible. And so we all start this journey of spiritual growth totally in the natural. But now the time has come for us to transition to the spiritual, to where now we begin, we must begin to see things first according to the spiritual. And then we can react in the natural. The reason why the world is in such chaos today is because the church has seen a problem in the natural and then made a decision in the natural to do perhaps some good work to deal with what they see and what they've ended up doing is creating chaos. They've done a lot of good works, but they've been dead works, works of the, of the flesh. Now, that's just a short introduction, and we'll get into this much more, but let's go on to a new idea. We, you and me, the entire world, missed a fatal bullet last night. We all missed death last night. Now, if you live in the Western world, you probably don't have a clue what I'm talking about. And so I'm going to try to explain that now before we get into really the meat of what I have to say today. And before we do that, I have to change a setting on my computer so it doesn't keep fading on me. So let me just try to do that here quickly. And we should be okay now. The reason why you will have no clue about what I'm talking about is because the entire Western media does not discuss what I am now going to tell you. If you live in the East, or what men now call the Global South, then you probably do, do know what I'm talking about. If you live in the West, but you take the time to understand the times we live in, then you will also probably know what I'm talking about. So what was the fatal bullet that we missed? Last night, Israel claimed that it made its retaliatory strike against Iran, that it had been promising 
all month since Iran hit Israel with 190 missiles on October 1st. But the retaliatory strike that Israel used last night did not seem to destroy any of Iran's critical infrastructure and it also did not use an atomic bomb. The retaliatory strike was so insignificant, it appears, this is just what I see so far from the news, it appears so insignificant that it looks to me like Iran will not even fulfill its promise to hit Israel with a devastating, utterly destructive blow. It had promised to immediately virtually destroy Israel if, if Israel dared to hit it again. In Israel, as you know, it has a propensity to continue to destroy, destroy, destroy. It's destroying Lebanon now. It's killed thousands of innocent Lebanese men and women. Continues to destroy the innocence of Gaza, the Palestinians. The genocide continues. It's been striking even all the way up to Syria. It has tanks at its northern border ready to go up into Lebanon. Israel is bent upon the genocidal destruction of Palestine and, in fact, all of those who descend from Ishmael, the Arabs, all of them, all of the nations at once, all the way up to the Euphrates River, I think that Iran, if this strike is as insignificant as it appears, will not make a retaliatory strike against Israel. And the reason for that would be that this would almost certainly lead Israel to strike Iran with nuclear bombs. Therefore, I believe the world has a little more time to repent of its sins and transition from the natural to the spiritual. But first, we need to begin to understand the times we live in. You will have to go to alternative news sources. Don't just listen to legacy mainstream media or your probably deceived pastor probably deceived Bible teacher. Many of the Bible colleges are totally filled with false doctrine. Uh, I, I literally cannot lead you to any book in these places to go to, to in order to understand doctrine. If you want a good place to begin, it would be my book, When We Awake, and you can reach that on my website at uh, www.zedek.us. On the right, there is a lot of links, and one of them is to a link to my book, When We Awake. You can download that free as a PDF. It is a very good um, resource for your journey from the natural to the spiritual. Remember Jesus said, let them see but never understand, and he was quoting Isaiah. And we start not seeing, and we will only begin to see if we give ourselves to understanding the Word of God, if we sell all for the Word of God, if we sell all for truth, if we give up all that is false for all that is true. I will uh, put some links to some specific non-Western news sources uh, at the bottom of this, uh, well, in the uh, information box to this video. 
So first you have to understand the times you live in and you need you have to get out of the Western media to do that because they hide the truth from everyone. Even those who lead this country do not know the truth because the media lies about everything and those who are in power, the CIA, the NSA, uh, the hidden rulers behind the scenes who have been making the decisions for Biden all these four years, um, you know, they know, or they know some things. I don't think they know a lot of what is going on because even they are lied to by certain of the powers that be. So understand the times we live in. Second, fill yourself with the Word of God. You must read the Word. You must try to find true biblical teachers that can teach you the Word of God. I have many, many videos on this channel and on BitChute. Uh, another teacher that has uh, a site on this is Kenneth Visher, V-I-S-S-C-H-E-R, Kenneth, and uh, Stephen Jones. And those are really the only three I can point you to at this time. The reality is that you must become an overcomer. And I've done many videos on the Christ's letter to the seven churches in uh, the book of Revelation, Revelation chapters two and three. There are seven churches and there are certain promises Christ gives to the overcomers of each church. It's important for you to understand those things. I will give you a few more instructions as we proceed in this particular teaching. Now, you must understand that present day Israel is a Nazi Zionist genocidal state, just as is the United States and all other Western powers known as Five Eyes, that term five eyes deals with gathering of intelligence, military intelligence from all the world so that the Western nations can rule and control the world as the hegemon, as the imperialist power of the entire world. Known as the five eyes and the European Union. So those are the Western powers. Israel, the United States, the European Union, and the Five Eyes. The Five Eyes consists of the United States, Great Britain, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. Remember the nations that beat down the world the most, the worst during the great planned epidemic that hit us at the end of 2019 and it still has not ended. You know, remember the abominations that were done in the hospitals in this country, Canada, New Zealand, Australia, Great Britain. These nations have waged genocidal policies against both their own people and against all Arabs who are the descendants of Ishmael. This includes the present-day Palestinians that Israel now wantonly destroys down to its last woman and child, if they can. The United States is now seen as a failed state by much of the world. It has tried to control the entire world through its rule-based policies that it changes according to its dictates and not according to law. It lies about all of its diplomatic goals. When it makes a treaty, it breaks its treaty. Just witness the tr many treaties with the uh, Indian tribes of America. It's treaties with Iraq and other nations that it then totally abrogates and then destroys the nation because the nation will not bow down and do 
what the United States wanted. Look what uh, the United States did to Iraq and its uh, destruction of Saddam Hussein. Totally lying about weapons of mass destruction. I actually have a book that is an entire book of propaganda. But listen to what Scott Ritter has to say about Iraq and, the, and that there were no weapons there and that he finally woke up to what the United States is and he has been boldly speaking about it since. So boldly that in fact the FBI uh, came to his door with about 40 men, took all of his computer equipment. Of course he was in great fear with these men with guns and oh man what a world we live in. The United States is the leader, the epitome of that which the Bible calls Babylon the Great. It is the hammer that strikes the whole earth, according to Jeremiah 50, verse 23. That's Jeremiah 50, verse 23, the hammer that strikes the whole earth. The time has come for God to destroy those who destroy the earth, according to Revelation chapter 11, verse 18. And remember, God put it into the heart of the beast to destroy Babylon the Great. He put it into the heart of the head of the eighth beast to destroy Babylon the Great. I think that it is the eighth beast who is the head of the eighth beast who is currently ruling the West, trying to continue its rule of the entire world, which the world is throwing off like Russia and China and Iran. That's why that's why the West hates those three countries specifically. Now, if you are still a Christian Zionist, and if you believe that today's unbelieving genocidal Jews have a legal right to the ancient land of Israel, then you are still fooled, you are still deceived by the false doctrines of many churches and Bibles. In this case, I recommend two excellent books on this issue that were written by Stephen Jones. The first is called Struggle for the Birthright that he wrote around 20 years ago. The second is a book he wrote late last year and early last year after just after Israel began its current genocide against Palestine on October 7th of 2023. And that book is called Christian Zion Zionism. How deceived can you get? Indeed, how, can you, how deceived can you get? It's sickening that Christians destroy, I mean Christians support the wanton killing and murder of women and children. There are videos showing such abhorrent things that they do that the J Jews themselves from Israel have posted. So abhorrent how anyone can support them is beyond evil in my opinion. But we have a little more time. God gave us a little more time. We escaped the bullet last night. Israel could have hit Iran much harder, which would have provoked a war that would have led to uncontrolled nuclear war and the destruction of this planet. Therefore, we must focus on the spiritual, not the natural. Now we must move into a time where it's first the spiritual and then the natural. For the last four years, I've been saying and posting videos about Mystery Babylon, the beast, um, and saying that everything has changed. What happened with the planned demic and the election changed everything. Nothing will ever return to what it was. So you 
have to stop thinking about playing like you always have. Stop thinking about and stop going on vacations. In the West, stop even thinking about how you're going to change your nation's politics. It's so corrupted, it's so controlled here, that you can't do anything to change it. Our entire government is controlled by Zionists. APAC, A-I-P, A-C, America Israel PAC, controls and gives so much money to our politicians that all of our politicians and presidents do what they tell them to do. And stop focusing on making money. You cannot serve God and mammon. Stop focusing on mammon. Stop loving the world. Stop focusing on the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Now I've shown you in past videos that the entire Western Church has failed. And it failed because it judged according to the natural and not the spiritual. You start with the natural, first the natural, then the spiritual. But our churches are not spiritual. They are natural. They see things in the natural and therefore they make all of their decisions concerning the good works they're going to do according to the natural not according to the spirit. A work is only going to be effective if it is born of the spirit, not of the flesh. That's why Jesus said the flesh counts for nothing. All of the church's good works have failed. Point me to one that hasn't. Its leaders and laity began to worship false gods. In fact, many, many years ago until now, the church is fully leavened, fully full of the birds of heaven, the demons of the demons, the evil spirits that dwell in heavenly places. All its leaders and laity, virtually all, all but those in the Church of Philadelphia, began to worship false gods and to indulge in unlawful practices, unlawful like sexual immorality. Again, witness what happened with um, IHOP, International House of Prayer, and Mike Bickle. And there are so many other pastors and leaders who have come to light since then. Look at Rick Joyner and those affiliated with him. Until now, in these last years, the man of lawless, lawlessness, and this is according to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 through 12, the man of lawlessness has been revealed, the abomination of desolation. For the, for the man of lawlessness literally dwells in the hearts of most people in the West who call themselves Christian. I know that's hard to comprehend and understand, but that's the reality. Let me tell you as a truth. Many of those in the East who fight against this Nazi Zionist genocide led by the United States and Israel are far more righteous, far more righteous than those Zionists who wantonly kill them. Let me say that again. Many of those, and I'm talking about Palestinians, I'm talking about Arabs, I'm talking about Muslims, many of those are far more righteous than you who support genocide 
and you who commit genocide? Why are you in the, the American military? Why are you in the Israelite military? Why do you kill defenseless men, women, and children? It's sickening. Utterly sickening. And so now, it's time to move on. We escaped a bullet last night, but that bullet is going to be shot again soon. I think that bullet will come within the next six months. We must transition to first the spiritual, then the natural. We have to begin, we have to not only begin, we have to learn to see in the spiritual. So now let me take you to some scriptures. We're going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2 first. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Starting in verse 6, Paul says, <clears throat> speaking to the Corinthians, Yet among the mature we do impart wisdom, although it is not a wisdom of this age, or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to pass away. But we impart a secret and hidden wisdom of God, which God decreed before the ages for our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him. These things God has revealed to us, to Paul, to other disciples who have learned from Paul, and of course, all the disciples who wrote the scriptures that we depend upon for our doctrine. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. And who knows a person's thoughts except the Spirit of that person which is in him? So also no one comprehends the thoughts of God, except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might understand the things freely given us by God. Yes, when you really believe in Jesus, you receive the Spirit of God. But then we, there are warning, warnings after warnings in the Scripture to not love the world and to focus upon the things of God instead of the things of the world. So, we cannot understand the things freely given us by God if we focus on the flesh and upon the world. Now I've done studies on the book of Romans and Romans is a complete thought from chapter 1 to chapter 8 to where Paul comes to the final warning and he says, if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if you live according to the Spirit, you will live. And then he goes on to talk about the coming glorification of the sons of God. But that, son, that glorification is only for those who made themselves ready, according to 1 John chapter 2, 28 to 1 John 3, verse 3. You have to make yourself ready to see Christ face to face. If you, do, if you do not do that, then you will not be part of the first resurrection. And you certainly will not be part of the hidden resurrection that comes before that. Then in verse 13 of 1 Corinthians 2, Paul says, We impart this this wisdom of God 
in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Spirit, interpreting spiritual truths to those who are spiritual. Well, the question is, are you spiritual? Or are you simply a man of the flesh, sim simply a carnal, natural man who makes all of his decisions according to the flesh and not according to the Spirit? The natural person, the person of the flesh, does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him. Now many, in fact most in the church, are natural persons, natural people. They do not accept the things of the Spirit of God, and therefore they, they are trapped within this false system of churchianity that we have. The natural person is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. Verse 15, But the spiritual person judges all things, yet he himself is to be judged by no one. And then Paul asks, Who has understood the mind of the Lord? so as to instruct him? Well, none of us. So we have to listen to God for God's instruction. And then Paul says, but we have the mind of Christ. So we can be instructed if we give ourselves to understanding the things of God. Now let's go on to 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Paul says, We do not want you to be unaware, brothers, of the affliction which we experienced in Asia. For we were so utterly burdened beyond our strength that we despaired of life itself. That describes my last three years. I uh, fully expected to die before last Tuesday, last Tuesday, just a few days ago, this is Saturday of the, of the week, was my 69th birthday. And the Lord woke me up uh, two nights before that with the thought that I should prepare my final personal property bequest to my grandchildren. And I thought that was telling me, your time's at hand. And so um, I thought that I would um, certainly pass away. It actually was Saturday night, the Saturday night before my birthday that that happened. I, uh, my wife called my whole family to come on Sunday for a little get together we were going to have on my birthday. They know how sick I am and we asked them to come on Sunday and they did and um, I ended up making it to my birthday. So Paul again says, indeed we felt that we had received the sentence of death. But that was to make us rely not on ourselves but on God who raises the dead. So I feel like I escaped the bullet and that I was raised from the dead at least for a few more days. God delivered us from such deadly peril and he will deliver us. On him we have set our hope that he will deliver us again. Now let's go to second, uh, I'm sorry, second Corinthians chapter 12. Verse 1, Paul says, I must go on boasting, though there is nothing to be gained by it. I will, be, I will go on to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Now he's talking about himself, even though he doesn't say so. 
Whether in the body or out of the body, I don't know. God knows. And I know that this man was caught up into paradise. And whether in the body or out of the body, I don't know. But God knows. And this man heard things that cannot be told, which man may not utter. On behalf of this man, I will boast. But on my own behalf, I will not boast, except of my weaknesses. Though if I should wish to boast, I would not be a fool, for I would be speaking the truth. But I refrain from it so that no one may think more of me than he sees in me or hears from me. So to keep me from becoming conceited because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan, to harass me, to keep me from becoming conceited. So there are many, not many, I mean there are some, of God's servants who have been horribly harassed by Satan to keep them from being, becoming conceited in the revelation of God, the revelation of the Word of God. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should leave me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. I can't imagine being weaker than I am now. I literally lay on my couch all day yesterday after getting up after um, I think 16 hours of sleep. I was, I got up at 10.20 in the morning, went to bed at about 7.30 the night before. And I lay on the couch until four o'clock when my daughter and a friend of hers came to uh, just visit with us, my wife and me, my wife, as you can imagine. is under horrible stress. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. That was 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 to 10. And finally, Ephesians chapter 6, starting in verse 10. First Corinthians chapter six, verse 10. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. Put on all of the armor of God. That you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil, the wicked one, Satan, the leading spiritual entity that rules this world. And then look at verse 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. We do not wrestle against men. We do not wrestle against those that we see out there. We don't wrestle against our fleshly governments. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Instead, we wrestle against the rulers against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. 
Remember the title of this, first the spiritual, then the natural. When we become mature, we learn to fight against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. We do not see a problem and then boom, hit it. We do not see a problem and then get on the floor in church and pound the floor and scream out uh, in prayers against these entities because that's doing it in the flesh and we do it to be seen of men. What do we do? We have to do the following things. There are seven specific things we must do in order to battle against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Otherwise, we will only and ever battle against flesh and blood. First thing, we have to take up the whole armor of God. Again, Paul says that. Take, you have to take it all. You have to put on all of the armor so that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand firm. This is the evil day. Have you put on all the armor? Well, what's the first? Can you name the first piece of armor? Foundational, absolutely foundational. The first two are the foundation of God's throne and they are the foundation of your armor. If you don't have these, you don't have your armor on and you will never have your armor on. You cannot have your armor on because it all begins with this. Stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth or the girdle of truth, that which girds your loins, which girds and protects your most vital and sensitive parts. Have, having fastened on the girdle of truth. Now what is truth? Truth is justice. Truth is the word of God. Truth is Jesus Christ. I am the way, the truth, and the life. We are to walk in truth we learn the truth from the Word of God. Jesus has revealed the Word, His Word, in the Bible, so we understand and know truth by reading the Bible and then walking in obedience to what we learn from the Bible, and He will bring us from truth to truth, from precept to precept. And, this is also in verse 14, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate covers your other most sensitive parts, your heart, lungs, liver, kidneys, intestines. All of your vitals are protected by truth, which is justice and righteousness. The scriptures in the book of Psalms say that righteousness and truth are the foundation of God's throne, the very essence of his ability to govern the universe. That's the very essence of us to walk in the spirit, the very ability to fight against the principalities, against the forces of evil in heavenly places. Once we've done that, once we have girded our loins in truth and justice, once we have put on the breastplate of righteousness, then, as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace, then you're ready to begin to share 
the gospel, the truth, the good news of Jesus Christ. So we have three aspects of the armor of God at this point. We have a girdle of truth, we have a breastplate of righteousness, and we have shoes of the gospel of peace. Then we can walk. Verse 15. Oh, that was 15. Verse 16. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil ones. So the shield of faith, a defensive weapon, the devil attacks us, he tries to destroy our faith, he tries to destroy our walk with God. And believe me, that's been a powerful thing to have to deal with these last three years for me. The shield of faith. What is your faith in? Who is your faith in? Your faith must be in only one. And he has his name, has a name. His name is Jesus. Jesus is the stumbling stone. Jesus is the stone the builders rejected. Jesus is the stone that everyone still rejects, including the church and the Zionists. All unbelieving Jews, whether they're Zionists or not, do not have this. They stumble over the stumbling stone. Many of the Zionists are atheists. Some are Satanists. In the church, the same is true. Some are atheists, some are Satanists. So the fourth item was our shield of faith. And the fifth item is the helmet of salvation. Do you know that you're saved? Has the word of the Lord been revealed to you? Read 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. Pray that the word of the Lord will be revealed to you, because without the word of the Lord, without knowing the word of the Lord, without knowing that Jesus wrote the scripture, you cannot walk in, in truth, in that truth. That was our fifth part of our armor, and now the sixth, and take up the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So now that you know now that you have the helmet of salvation and you know the Word of God, then with the sword of the Spirit, you use the Word of God. That's your only offensive weapon. Not a natural sword. It's a spiritual sword. And with all this armor on, at the, then you can pray at all times in the Spirit, which, are, which is our seventh part of our armor, that we pray in the Spirit, because we are praying against rulers, authorities, cosmic powers over this present darkness. We are praying against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. If we don't approach this according to the spiritual, we will always lose. When you see so many people begin to rail against spirits in the heavens, are they doing it in the spirit or are they doing it in the flesh? Was it because they saw something in the flesh that was heinous and so now they're railing out against spirits, against spiritual forces? We must see things in the spirit and then pray according to what we see and how we should pray because <clears throat> until now, we have not had authority, most of us have not had authority to, bind, to really bind and loose things in heaven. And I count myself 
today, even today, among that. But the time is at hand, and I am looking forward to my glorification, certainly as the time when I will be able to fight in the heavenlies, and it will be effective. Praying at all times in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the Kodashim, all the holy ones. So that was Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18. We must see these. See this armor of God as spiritual armor. You see, our we were taught and rightly so, first the natural, then the spiritual. The goal of that was to become spiritual beings. I am on the verge of that, I'm on the verge of my death. But so are you. Because we all missed a bullet last night, and that bullet was nuclear war that would quickly continue to escalate until this world was destroyed. We have received a reprieve and it's time for men, women, everywhere to be restored so that God does not come and utterly strike this world with a curse and destroy it. Father, I pray that you will transition us from the natural to the spiritual, that you will give us eyes to see in the spirit, that we will walk in the spirit and not in the flesh, that we will live in the spirit and not according to the flesh. And we pray we groan, we groan, Lord, for the change. We, glo we groan for our glorification. We groan for our change <clears throat> from mortality to immortality. We groan with the earth that is groaning under the burden of the demonic, of the evil men who destroy this earth. And we pray now for a quick change, a quick change from the natural to the spiritual, for restoration of relationship to you and to others, to our fathers, our children, so that you do not, do not come and strike the earth with a curse as you threaten in the very last verse of the Old Testament. Lord, let us now begin to walk in the truth of the new covenant, where you write your ways upon our hearts and our minds, where you write your ways, your law upon our hearts and our minds. We repent of rejecting your law. We repent of our anomia, of our lawlessness. We repent of supporting an evil, genocidal Zionist regime in Israel. Father in heaven, we pray for transition to the spiritual. We pray for life and not death. 
In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, the only one true God, the stumbling stone that the world rejects, we pray. Amen.